My name is David Hay, formerly known as the Haymaker, and you're watching Shadow Boxer UK. Mr. <laughs> David Duron Hay. Yes. <laughs> Hi. Okay. I'm good. How are you? I'm excited. I'm really excited. First off, to, to see you, it's been a while since we've, this is a virtual meeting, it's, it's been a while since we've, we've spoken. We've known each other for many a year now. Yeah. An old key sparring partner of mine. I remember, I remember sparring, sparring with you with no, with, no, with no gloves on. Do you remember that? Well, I remember uh, being the first person to cut your eye, just yes. saying. And there was no gloves on, you did it, but you just had your wraps on, if, if memory served. <laughs> I was super confident that you, you didn't have that speed and timing and I miscalculated. Let's Guess just what? say it. Guess what? <laughs> Cut, my first cut, cut under my eye was, was from you to your good self, so. Going down in history books, I think. So listen, firstly, Dave, are you getting paid anymore? Because uh, you've sold the hell out of this fight. <laughs> I man I'm managing Derek Chisora, and as a manager, I need to speak from, from the heart. I, I need to tell people what it is that I believe is gonna happen on the day. I explain to them, what I've seen, what he's been doing behind closed doors. Obviously, what happens behind closed doors in the, in, in the gym is private, but it's very, very relevant for this fight. A lot of people have studied Derek Chisora's previous fights, and they've made their conclusions of what they believe will happen tonight on that, and that's understandable. They don't have any other information to, to base their opinion on, but I do. I've seen what Derek Chisora has been doing. I know who's been in U6 camp. I've talked and I've spoke to his fine partners. So I know what he's going to do. I know what he's done. But I also know what Derek Chisora has up his sleeve. And it's something that U6 will not be able to deal with. It's a type of a style that U6, with all the experience he's got, Olympic gold medal, world championship, amateur world champion. He was the... WSB champion, he was the uh, Muhammad Ali Cup, he won the WBA, WBC, WBO, IBF, Ring Magazine, Lineal Championship, all of the belts this guy has had, all of the trophies he's had. But what he hasn't had is a beast in front of him swinging like an absolute lunatic who, who's built significantly bigger than all of the people he's ever fought before. And this guy punches real hard. This guy's trained now for 12 rounds, three minutes around to come like a freight, freight train just to keep he's with Derek Chisora is willing to take five to land one that's not a, that's not what happens when you stick fights people are so worried about his power worried about his skill they keep away from him and turn it into a boxing match Derek Chisora said I expect to eat some leather I've learned to love the taste of leather bring it on how does he like my leather he, I, he's not used to eating it like I am let's just let's just do it He's going to pin him to the corners, into the ropes, and it's going to be an absolute barn, barnstormer. You're going to love it. I know you love a good tear up. <laughs> make, sure, make sure you get your popcorn because it's going to be crazy. But uh, listen, I, 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 I do believe that obviously you're seeing something different to everybody else because you're within the no. camp. But have you been doing a lot of work on the feet? Because let's be fair, David. Yes, okay, he has to pin him down and sit on his chest, but it's getting there. You know, have you been doing that work in the gym? Exclusively is what we've been, we've been working on that. Making the feet for me is the most important element of this fight. You can have all the, 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 the guns in the world. You have all the punches. If your opponent's behind you because he's turned to you, it's no good. It's that bull and matador situation. You know, bull's a lot stronger than the matador, but the, the, the matador just keeps turning him. This is what Usyk usually does, and Derek's aware of that. We've brought in sparring partners who Derek wasn't able to deal with, like Artis Spilka. He, uh, he was able to close the range and knock him out in a couple of rounds, where what? someone like Dante, whereas Dante Wilder took nine rounds to knock him out. Do you see a difference there? Also, you go back one fight, you've got um, Sainard Gashi. Derek did did 10 rounds of him. Very underwhelmed fight. Very, very boring fight. Derek just couldn't get his legs there. And as a result, he, he was a boring 12 rounds, sorry, 10 round points decision that really was just horrible to watch. It was because his feet weren't turned on. He didn't know his brain had to be engaged with his feet. So his feet were getting left behind, was getting wrong footed. 
they, but, but we really worked on his feet and we saw the difference in the next fight. The, yeah. the Arthur Jorgen closed the range and took him out in a manner that if he pins and hits Usyk with the same combination, Usyk is going to sleep. He's sliding down the ropes unconscious, just like Spilker did. Then he went in there against a significantly bigger man than himself, you know, um, David Price. Done the same thing, closed the range, got inside him, got on his chest, let his hands go, kept the pressure on, kept the pace going. David Price wasn't able to deal with it. And he got him out of there, he took him out. He exhausted him and took him out. Derek wasn't in the best shape for that fight. He didn't have any that many more rounds in the tank, but he had enough to win that fight. That performance, when he fought David Price, wouldn't be enough to win tonight. Would not be enough. I'm aware of that. Derek's definitely aware of that because he was in there. He realized he didn't have much left in the, in the engine. This time around, he's relaxed. He's cool, he's calm, he's focused. I've never seen him so switched on this early, but not switched on like he's fired up. Switched on like he knows everything's done. All of the boxes have been ticked. He, he Normally he's a bit anxious before fights because he knows deep down he might run out of steam here or he might get real tired real quick. Now he's just so confident. He's going into a fight for the first time, a 12 round fight, knowing no matter what this guy throws at him, he can just keep coming forward. He can just keep swinging, body shots, head shots, inside clinching, punching inside, working inside. He's going to bring the heat and Usyk's going to need to do something he's never done before. Maybe he can do it. Maybe he can. I just don't think he can. I just think, you know, a, a big man like Derek Chisora, with his experience, with his toughness, is going to grind him down. So, you, you know, you've been saying that he's been pacing the, uh, the corridors. How hard has that been? to stop him knocking on Uzik's door to, 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 to get the fight on the night before because he looks like, like you say yesterday, he looked like he was just ready to go. In fact, I think he said, I'm ready to go now. Yeah, he, he's, that's because he saw the guest, because he saw Usyk and we're trying to keep him up away from each other. They've got on different side of the hotels. When you see, when any one of our people see Usyk, this is a, a radio and we say, okay, Usyk's here and let's keep him there. We're keeping the guys away from each other. Each other. What we don't want before the fight is Derek to just think, fuck it, I'm going to do it now. Just come and have it. Because he's that type of character. He's that type of uh, character who's, who do something crazy. Like, he's done it before. We don't need that. So U6 team know that also. So you can see them peering around doors, seeing if, if Derek's there or not. Nobody, everybody wants it, the, the, the explosion to happen in the ring with the cameras rolling. So it's, it's, it's a bit strategic here, you know, logistics are a little bit, a bit, 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 bit weird, but we're, we're, get, we're getting it there. We've got a few hours to the fight now. We're, 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 we're right there. We're on, the, we're, we're on the cusp of seeing something magnificent, something that nobody in their wildest dreams could believe. A man who's lost nine fights yeah. can do the unthink will beat one of the greatest cruiserweights in, in history. A guy who's never lost, Olympic chase, he's done it all. People look at this guy as the blueprint of how to teach a boxer to fight. It's he's true. that good. And he's going to go in there with a bruiser, a brawler, who just swings punches. On paper, Derek Tazura has got zero uh, realistic chance of winning this fight. But this is a, this, some, this, this, this is an upset in the air. I can feel it. Derek Tazura knows this is his last shot, last chance to lose. He's going he's gonna to knock him out or get disqualified trying. Believe me, this is... This is going to be, it's going to be epic. Do not miss it. So listen, firstly, um, all fun and games that have been happening in the lead up to this fight have been fantastic. And actually, it's been a welcome change, to be fair. But how clever um, is Usyk getting into people's heads and hearts? And especially, like, listen, he's a likeable guy. Mm. Good, good plan or, you know, is that a good plan or, it, you know? A game, Usyk, a game plan, should I say? I think, I think Usyk gets into everyone's head because everybody knows how good he is. So everyone talks about how good he is. So everyone shows him so much respect before the fight. And the respect factor gives, gives him that distance to do what he does, to do his dance. Derek can't allow to, Derek can't play the boxing game with him. Derek can't box. He, he, it's not a disrespectful thing saying. He's just not a boxer, he's a fighter. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're going to have a, why have a boxing match with one of the greatest ever boxers? Why not turn it into a fight, a street fight? Go in there, get close, let them bombs fly to the body, to the head for 12 rounds. Let's see what U6 made of. Let's see how great he really is. We, he looks about as great as you can look as a cruiserweight, 
but now he wants to look great as a heavyweight and he's going to need to get through one of the toughest heavyweights of our generation. But it can be done because you've done be it done. yourself. It, you've it, done it, it yourself. Done. I remember I did it eight years ago. Derek Chisora today is significantly bigger, stronger. His technical game's so much. I'm, I'm so glad I didn't fight this version of Derek Chisora. I fought a 28-year-old version of Derek Chisora. You know, he's 36 now. Big difference. A lot of experience, a lot of learning, a lot of, I know, a lot of ups and downs. His life has changed in a different place now. He's, you know, he's found God. He's a born-again Christian. You know, he's a family man. A lot of the stuff he was doing when he fought me, he's not doing now. He's a bigger, stronger, more dedicated beast now. I'm very, very happy I fought him in 2012 and not in 2020 like you six going to. I'll be honest, it has been an absolute pleasure, uh, a surprise, but a pleasure to watch him develop under mm -hmm. the Haymaker banner. I mean, like you say, you can, you can see it. You can see the confidence in him, the way that he's kind of switched on. Um, you, 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 he's one of those characters that you think, God, I really want this you, kid. You, and I like him, it? don't get me wrong, but you want that kid to go on this time. You want him to have that break. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. This, this is the chance. He's got so many fans. He, he's, he, people can relate to him. You know, he's the guy who wasn't athletically gifted. He wasn't, the, he wasn't winning races. He's not that fast at running. He's not, you know, he's just the guy who just keeps trying. He just keeps trying and trying and trying. And he's, through trying, he's got himself into the position where he could become the mandatory for Anthony Joshua's WBO heavyweight title. No one thought in a million years someone of Derek Tazora's record could do that. But he's done it. He really, he's, he's, he's done it through hard work, dedication, changing his life, listening to the right people around him. He's there, he's on the cusp, and in a few hours, he's going to get in that ring and he's going to shock the world. Do not miss it. Live on Sky Sports Box Office. Got to go now. Got to go and do some more promo across the room for me now. Lovely to see you, Jackie. Yeah. Thank you so much, darling. And good luck. Thank you very much. And I'll see you soon. Bye. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber of Shadowboxing UK, we'd love to see you. So please go ahead and subscribe now.